Hi, in this video I would like to update you on my investigation of adding Miracast support to the Raspberry Pi. So what is Miracast? Miracast is a wireless display standard or Wi-Fi display standard built on top of Wi-Fi Direct specification. So this allows you to bridge, uh, say, a connection between your phone to your TV so you can mirror whatever you see on your phone to the TV. And the underlying technology is uh, Wi-Fi Direct, which uh, basically allows you to bridge two Wi-Fi endpoints directly together without going through a router and effectively in this connection one of them one of the endpoints is acting as a router so um, I spent the past little while trying to figure out uh, oh actually before I get to that so the mirror the mirror cast specification itself is hidden behind a paywall uh, so you can't just go on the internet and download the specification and figure out what it does um, but there are enough clues on the internet that if you look hard enough, um, there are hints and clues everywhere uh, that you can sort of figure out what exactly Miracast does or how the specification is supposed to work. And so, so if you look on the right, um, this is a Wireshark capture uh, that I did on the on the Pi uh, of a Miracast transaction. So, so I think I figure out all the pieces that that make this thing go. So I can actually go off and build my own Miracast receiver um, if I choose to. Well, I, I do want to. Um, so, so what do you start, right? So obviously, uh, so you need a. Oh, so in this video, I'm just gonna walk through all the the process I went through and walls I hit, um, trying to figure out how Miracast works. So, so obviously, you I, I started with just a Wi-Fi Direct dongle, right? So if you watch my previous video, I've showed you how to uh, how to install or. Well, I walk through how to install the driver and um, how to install the sample application so you could uh, play around with the Wi-Fi Direct functionality on the Pi. So this is the same driver. So one thing you will notice is if you do exactly uh, what I showed in the last video and launch the application, so by installing the driver and install the sample application here or rather in the layer above, So yeah, so if you install the driver from this repository, or, or or if you can install, you can also install one just from the internet, and or and then you install the uh, the Wi-Fi Direct application here and launch the application. Uh, under the Wi-Fi Direct menu on the phone, you should be able to see that your your Pi will respond to the probe requests. But if you go under the wireless display menu on the phone, you'll realize that you cannot, you'll fail to pick up uh, the Pi. So that means there must be an operating difference between the two modes. So that's where I started the investigation. And I realized that um, all you have to do is, at least for this repository, just go into the include directory and uh, go to autoconf.h and search for config.wfd. So you just need to uncomment this line, which will enable the compile all the compile options for uh, to enable Wi-Fi display options on the driver. Which, if you look through the code, all it basically all it does is include certain subclass in a probe request response uh, to to indicate that the Wi-Fi display support on the Pi. So if you uncomment this and then recompile the driver according to the instruction here and load that. And then you should be able to pick up your Wi-Fi display. Uh, you should be able to pick up your Pi under the Wi-Fi display menu on the phone. So, so that that's and then, and then on top of that. Oh, sorry. Before I get to that, so, so, so after recompile the driver, you need to launch the sample application uh, here, uh, and then you'll be able to pick up the the Pi from the Wi-Fi uh, display menu. And then you can initiate a negotiation, right? And that's the that's the white uh, part of the transaction here. But after the transaction completes, you'll realize that the first thing the the phone tries to send is a DHCP request. So, when in, in a Wi-Fi direct connection, uh, one of the endpoint is classified will be will be will be set to be a group owner, and the other one will be set to a client. And then the responsibility of the group is the, it's the responsibility of the group owner to uh, start issuing IP addresses to to the clients. So it seems like in the in the Miracast scenario, 
uh, at least at least between the phone to the pod. I don't know if this is specification defined behavior or this is an Android specific behavior. Uh, the sync or the pod is always expected to assign IP addresses, right? And then there's additional clues in this repository here. So if you go under document document, there's actually a a specific Linux DHCP server notes that instructs you how to set up DHCP server on the receiver itself. So I, I set up the DHCP server on my Pi according to the, um, according to this configuration here. And obviously you can tailor it to, uh, to suit your environment. Uh, in my case, I changed the subnet to 2.x simply because uh, the 1.x is used by my wired connection. So, so after that, you set up your DHCP server. So in my case, I use the uh, the ISC dash DHCP dash server from the from the repository. So after that, you set up your DHCP server, and then you could see that your transaction would advance a bit further because your DHCP configuration would complete. But then you will realize that um, nothing is still happening. And then that's when I went on the internet, I did more research, and I realized. Uh, I realized this fellow, and I apologize if I mispronounce his name, uh, Ken Suke has already figured out how that works. So he, he set up a Wi-Fi display connection between two Android endpoints. And then, so basically all the the uh, the Wi-Fi, there, there is a sample Wi-Fi display sync uh, implementation in the, uh, the, in the Android open source project. So I checked that out, and, and, I, and I look at the the, the the function implement uh, the class implementation for the uh, the Wi-Fi display sync class, and I realized that it's basically just a huge RTSP protocol. Um, I, I it seems to me they may have uh, changed changed messages here and there, but it's basically just RTSP, and then it starts sending MPEG transport stream payloads. So 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 after that, uh, I wrote a little uh, Python script. That effectively all it does is uh, sends out the right responses in the, on the expected port, just so that the negotiation will complete. So, so this is so that that is captured here, right? So then you see your option, your uh, your your response, and then your option, and then so on and so forth. I all I basically did is I look at the Android open source code and pull out the relevant bits uh, the bits that I need for the message exchange, and then and code it in the script. So I got far along enough to uh, to convince the phone to start actually sending me real uh, uh, runtime data. So so as you can see, Wireshark interpreted it as MPEG two transport streams. So these are actually uh, these this I believe is all chained together. And then so the so so this group of packets here uh, is terminated by this packet uh, at the bottom. And then and then if you look at uh, the Wireshark interpretation of this scroll all the, all the way to the bottom, and you will see a PS data. And then you start off, uh, the PS data starts off with 0000001. Zero, 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 that's actually just the H, that's, that's actually just an H264 network abstraction layer uh, delimiter, right? So this marks the beginning of an H264 stream. So the next step I did um, was a bit manual. So I, I basically, Save the Wireshark dump uh, into a text file, and I wrote a little script to pull out all the H.264 portion of it, and then and then dump that into a file, and then I try to play back using uh, using DLC, and this is what you see. So, which means I, I uh, and then so obviously, I then save this file onto the Pi, and I use the sample hello video application try to play back this file to see if the decoder. Uh, on the Pi is happy, and then obviously that also worked as well. So, uh, so yeah, so so that means I sh I now should have enough information to uh, to implement a Miracast receiver on the Pi, and um, so at least for the video portion of it, I haven't spent that much time looking at the audio portion of it. Um, so I just need to make this run in real time. Uh, thank you for watching. Bye.